Good morning. Rukenak. Sorry about that. Sorry I was a few minutes late. Um, to see your bullets, isn't it, on the computer? You go to do something and it's like, oh, hang on, Apple's bucking around over here. Did you want to do something with that? Well, it won't respond if you do. And if you don't, it also will not respond. So I should have come on earlier then. Uh, but anyway, hello, good morning. It is the, I'm at my desk, so it's the 16th of May today. Um, <clears throat> good morning, Chris. Good morning, Antoinette. Good morning. Oh, good evening, Dawn, Sherry, Paul. Freezing here in Brisbane, down to 10 degrees, have fire on. Yeah, we did, uh, friends actually, on I got freezing. We had a, like, Eurovision party on, my friend had a Eurovision party on, whatever that was, Saturday, and I got so cold outside that he did a fire, for, like a log burner indoors, we had a barbecue, so I just got so cold, it was freaking ridiculous, but then it is only May, and I don't, I think we had a bit of sunshine here, and we all went, oh, it's summer, no, it's not, it's really not, um, to be honest, if we get a great July and August, that's fine, so I don't know what we're thinking, really, that, oh, why well, we're complaining about cold, it is May, and it's England, um, but yeah, uh, weather went down, temperature went down to, I think it might have gone down to four yesterday, four or six degrees. So good morning, George. I haven't been in your lives recently. You're still going every day. Uh, morning, Twisted Ghost. Morning, Jewel. Yes, there's a bit, um, a bit of a, why can't I never phrase? Not a spanner in the works, is it? It's a bit of peace because it's not just me offloading onto the phone. I've actually got some reselling content. And uh, yes. Uh, oh, hi, Peter. Yeah, it's been a long time, isn't it? So, yes, I've got a new strategy. And I tried, well, I'm trying, so I'm currently trying it out. And I went sourcing yesterday. So I've been watching Chris Daly Refinement. And he's talking a lot about, I mean, he's talking big figures, which are not something that my tiny little head can cope with right now. But I do like, I've always, you know, I, I rate his, I think it's like anything, it's like dieting, you need some rules to follow. And he's always coming up with here's some rules and you go, oh, okay, I'll follow those then. Um, because otherwise you're just in the abyss going, I'm not sure, will this sell? I don't know. Should I pick that up? I don't know. Um, mm, how long should I wait? And we're all just guessing. And it's we just like something to follow, don't we? A bit of structure. And uh, so, yeah, I've been watching him and he's talking about buying things for $8 and, and selling, at, selling at $30 plus. So I've been listening to that and I thought, right, I've been doing the, because obviously, you know, I'm thinking about, so Tom and I are divorcing and I'm thinking about, right, what money do the girls and I need? Uh, what have I got coming from where? What do I need to add? So my tiny little brain can cope with this new strategy. And it is that... I'd already got on board with what Chris had said about, and we kind of know, you can either be a stack them high, sell them cheap seller, or you can be a bit more niche and look for the stuff that's going to hopefully give you a bigger margin, hopefully, and but you might need to search more for it. And I thought, well, yeah, I'm probably the, I'd rather search more because, I mean, does anybody enjoy listing? I have noticed, you know, it's like the first thing to go. And to be honest, I list, yeah, one to two days a week. And some people I know are very good and they list every day or they have their little bank and they're shooting things live every day. Uh, I've tried it a few moons ago and naturally... I just guess I get a surge of energy occasionally and then I'm like right like so today I'm having a surge of energy I'm right right productive gonna get this done this done this done you're gonna pop out do that this and uh it's gonna we're gonna have a great dinner tonight so everything's gonna be perfect you know rather than it's beans on toast okay you know <laughs> again um yes 
So, where do I start? Right, I'll tell you about my new sourcing strategy and then I'll do the haul. Uh, let me have a slab of tea first. Um, Antoinette same here, barbecue in the afternoon was abandoned to come indoors and put the heating on. Oh, it was just, I'm glad it wasn't just me then. Oh, my phone was so good. Yeah, and <laughs> yes, we have this thing in our house, right? This is, it, it, it's getting back on track in two minutes, I promise. Um, where I go around putting on like little lamps you know, in the evening, like little mood lighting. But if I leave the room and Tom comes in, you come back, all the little lamps have been turned off, big overhead light on. And I'm like, oh, why don't you just doesn't understand mood lighting? But I just like that little, little lamps. Now. My friend came in and... Um, and he lives on his own. He's got... So no one said about... He's just thought about this and uh and he's putting little and i'm indoors and he's putting a fire on and uh you know a nice log fire and then he's putting little lights on and i said oh you that's nice you do the little lights he said oh i don't like the big overhead lights <laughs> oh my god because usually blokes are like oh uh, i need light let's just put the strip light on and turn off all my little lamps um anyway uh, so the other one thing i'm going to just say now because it's completely not the content that you were expecting but i've just got to share it because i love wentworth puzzles if anybody else does they advertised at me and i had a look and they're doing this new um it's called mini mindful puzzles and they're like the there's probably the starting price is nine pounds fifty and they are pieces 30 to 80 pieces but they but they're not kids ones so they're aimed at adults but they're so that you can just do a little puzzle but it's kind of um, I, by the looks of it it's more difficult um but yeah but reasonably priced like you could oh you can treat yourself to that so i just i'd share that and also yeah you might i mean eventually we'll start seeing the mini mindful puzzles out and then bear in mind they are cheaper so it's so slightly reasonable hmm. george almost lol when i can be bothered oh right well yeah you've got i think i don't know i just feel generally it's nice to have a structure, but I you have to go with when you where, where your energy levels are, and mine mostly are somewhere else, but they're not they're not with me. Um, I mean, some days, I mean, obviously things have been a bit uh, not not the usual times around here, but some days I've just gone right, I'm going to bed, you know, at half nine in the morning, <laughs> and this is where I'll be until I feel like getting back up again. Um, but you know, I, that's, I, some days are like that, aren't they? Um, yeah, morning crispy, um, Peter, Peter, a lot of resellers do like something to follow you. Right? Yeah, we just need, I think there's a half, like a little hope that hopefully this is going to freaking work and I'm not going to be riding that roller coaster of sales again. And then half the, we just generally even people that say they're spontaneous people i bet they have some structure in their life somewhere in something uh hi rust reloaded i think that's a blast from the past are you a blast from the past aren't you um welcome back george i've started listing 20 items minimum a day wow that is freaking loads um hats off to you since oh in fact actually is that something that Chris Dead of Refinement recommends. Yeah, I put, must have closed my ears at that point. Uh, since first of May, it's really keeping me on track. Well, it's that old thing, isn't it? On Friday, so Thursday, I did a bit of listing, and then Friday, I went hell for leather and did 30 plus listings. And, and it's that old thing, like how bizarre. I listed some stuff, and some of it's old. Um, yeah. Um, rust we call the overhead light the death ray i'm gonna start calling ours the death ray because <laughs> also in the kitchen we've got like i've got my little lamp like a bare bulb lamp that also you know the girls in the house like and so that is on and i've got fairies as well so it's one switch just put that on that's it for the evening so i'll just come in and out make tea whatever but yeah obviously other people tom will come in and just go oh big light <laughs> um the death ray. I have six lamps in my living room, much more cosy. Yes, cosy looking. Yeah, cosy is, I mean, when you're relaxing, 
like on your sofa you want coziness don't you jewel i hate the big light this is very interesting chris big light or or side lights um chris had us between one and 20 between one and 20 oh, just keeping your options open there when i can be asked might have a few cheeky bids on a live auction today oh what day is it tuesday oh the churchill i was debating probably shouldn't be but um, i was debating um jewel i do a five a day at least i did oh that's good i did 10 a day for about eight days and did not see a huge increase in sales excuse me um well yeah i'd keep it five a day then because otherwise it's like a waste of your time isn't it um all right funky neil i missed list d5 oh that's it peter um rust i'd love to be able to list 20 a day even at best could only list seven i oh, i did try 20 did i try 20 a day was it 10 a day i can't quite remember if i did 20 that was very short-lived i did do 10 a day for quite a while that was when i was doing jewelry so it was i got it more in bulk so i had it had the stock there and it was very quick to list and i guess i'm still just finding my way a bit more than finding my way but i'm still you know clothing it's not as second nature as jewelry had become just yet but i'm i'm getting there um twisted i'm doing a big house decluttering and putting on vintage well done yeah, it's fantastic for that. I've also got to do, I mean, I've been, obviously, you probably see, you've seen, I've been doing loads of decluttering, flogging. Yeah, I've been flogging house stuff on vintage as well. And I've also got to, and dropping stuff to the charity shop. I said to everybody in the house, I said, Tom, you leave this house. If you're going by the clothing bank or into CAV, where there's charity shops, I've got a bag for you because every time we leave, we need to take something out. Um, do, do, do. Chris Churchill today got a couple of bits yesterday from there. Mm, yeah, I was mm, was thinking about the jewellery, but because um, I was thinking because well, it would be small to move, I might have a little. Look. It might well, it might be on now actually the jewellery, so I might miss it anyway. And then that takes the decision away. And sometimes that's the best thing if you can't make a decision, and then it just gets taken away from you. Like, oh well, that's a relief because I don't have to think about it anymore. Um, uh, George, yeah, I used to have, used to average about 10 a day, but I heard Chris say wants to try doubling up and see how it goes. Are you seeing the benefits of the 20? Um, no, I had a fab result at auction at weekend, won a lot. I was prepared to bid 1300 on for 60. That's fantastic. What sort of shite was that, Neil? Um, Jewel, sorry that sent too soon. Had a crucial, uh, crucial typo, lol. I do five a day. I tried 10 a day for about eight days and noticed a huge increase in sales the following week. Oh, I see. I couldn't keep it up though, stockwise. Yeah, because then it can get to a stage where you're listing for the sake of listing rather than it being quality stuff. And then you've got a shop full of shite that you uh, that's bringing your whole shop down. Um Nice phrase, Chris. Holy sheep, Neil. Result. Um, <clears throat> twisted. Are you picking a niche to work on? Well, that, that, that face probably says it all. I still love jewellery and I still am going to, if I, I've still got a lot of jewellery knowledge and if I see stuff that's a good deal, I'm still going to pick it up. However, <coughs> excuse me, it can't be my niche right now because of various factors I've spoken about before. So, um, I presume that wasn't me, it twisted. So I, I'm back on clothing right now. And to be honest, also, I, I mean, the best thing in terms of, I, I'm planning to move somewhere tiny. <laughs> Is that by choice? It's a mixed decision, but I'm going to have less storage in the future. So I can't be fluffing around with big lamps anymore unless, um, unless if I 
and not being funny, but if I'm at the car boot and someone's selling a matching pair of brass lamps, I cannot, I can't leave those. I just have to get them sold and listed out the house very quickly out the flat. So, yes, I'm in clothing at the moment and I feel that I can get a fair amount in a Calax and I might be selling a bit. I won't be holding on to it for, for ages to get the best price because I need to be turning over. Um, oh, well chaffed cameras, Neo, lovely. At that price, may keep a lot for oh, your own collection. Oh yeah, I forgot you did cameras. Um, oh, they haven't got to the jewelry yet, Chris. Oh, okay. Shite. <laughs> um twisted yes i have a tiny craft room jewelry and littles works for me yeah and i still i mean i'm gonna pick up i'm always gonna pick up wentworth even though the price is tanked by the way if anybody don't pay too much they're really not going for what they used to but because me and the girls like doing them and so then i can just vlog them afterwards but and i'm also gonna pick up a uh, decent cross stitch as well that's slim to you know store um sounds like a good plan price to sell i know but do you know what i mean like i think you were being serious and i took that as sarcasm <laughs> um you need to, i need to believe an obvious stated to me on a regular basis and maybe that's what chris daily refinement does for us all the time states are bleeding obvious over and over and, and we go oh right yes yes um George, I've been focusing on clothing. I did, yeah, I didn't think you did a lot of clothing. You do a lot of toys, don't you? But I can't help picking up a few plushies for one pound at the booty. Yeah, and you've got a good amount of storage area, haven't you? So that's all right. Peter's always serious. Uh, yeah, okay, Peter. Um, good morning, Shelley Joe. Right, so where did we get to? Oh, that was just a complete random pile of bollocks. So let's talk about the new sourcing strategy. So... The new sourcing strategy, and I, I touched on this before, and it's got to be, well, more reliable sellers because they, yeah, again, stentably and obvious, <laughs> they've got to sell. <laughs> but seriously, like, and I did even yesterday, I meant to be weaning myself off of high priced cause or not viably priced cause and, and other stories. And I managed to leave a lot of and other stories I didn't manage to leave all the costs. So they are reliable sellers, those brands, if you can get them cheap enough. So it's got to be more reliable and viable sellers. Yeah. So, yeah, new strategy, more viable and reliable sellers. Um, I'm aiming to pick up 10 items that have, oh, I thought I heard something there. 10 items that have a £20 minimum profit per item. Now, the idea here is that some of those will be more than £20. And so as a result, I'm doing that week in, week out. I should be getting a grand profit from that. On top of that, I will allow myself some fluff. I can pick up the fluff and the fluff will be stuff that's less than a 20 pound profit but if i haven't picked up those 10 20 pound plus 20 pound plus items then I'm going to have to get my ass back out the door and find some more and i do kind of feel if you do enough sourcing if you cover enough ground see enough shops you will get there you know even if you have to yeah i mean i get on a bus get on a train to the places where you can find them I'll check in on that and we'll see how that's going for me. But uh, yeah, fluff on top. And then, so I, I'm happy to source. I only source at the moment one to two days a week. I haven't been back to the boots yet. The first one was last weekend and it was cold. And I just thought there's not going to be any family sellers there. And it's quite a bike ride. So I didn't do it. I might go this Saturday. Uh, yeah, so one to two days per week sourcing and one to two days a week listing. And then I fluff around on the other days. Yeah. So that's the new strategy. Oh, so I was like, oh, what's the bit at the bottom? Oh, it's my to-do list for today. And then 
we'll go through what I got yesterday. Uh, rust, I like the blue and obvious, yeah. Um, my mum, I must get that for my mum. She used to have a, I've probably told you this, she had a toaster that said toast, toast, toast on it, um, which she loved. I was like, oh, yeah, I can see that. Um, working class background and cognitive issues mean that nuance and inf inference don't really work for me. Yeah. I'm trying to think now. Ah, yeah, because I say to people I'm quite gullible because often people say something and I go, oh, really? And they go, no. And I go, oh, sorry, I'm a bit gullible. So, but at the same time, I'm a master at reading into things and reading between the lines of people's behaviour in front of me. Oh, I know what's happening there. Um, <laughs> uh, I can pick up on little things, but then the big things, I'm just totally gullible. We're all made up of opposites. Um, I want to say, oh, Chris, what have you sold? Um, Cola Flipper Economic, what's that? Cola Flipper Economics, right there. Oh, I haven't been watching Lee recently. Mind you, he hasn't put much out, has he? Maybe that's why. Um, except the bus ride, he'll be in his fancy fast car, yes. Yeah, which you can't get much in, but never mind. <laughs> um, have I given up on Etsy Twisted? For the moment, yes. I feel like I need more storage space if I want to give Etsy a proper go. I mean, I gave it a proper go, but it it just wasn't producing the sales for me. And yeah, maybe I wasn't listing regularly enough on it. That could be it. But whatever it was, I was finding it too hard work. But I've still got my account if I want to go back to it. Um, same with Depop's on hold. So um, as ever, my main sales are coming from a site that, sh that shall not be named. Um, yeah. Um, George, that's a good strategy. I've slowly been introducing something similar, building up to 20 to 50 pounds net profit stockpile. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, I need to catch one of your lives. Right, so we're going to start. So I went sourcing yesterday, a couple of towns out. I was out until it was like school hours. Yeah, because unfortunately I came back when there's lots of school children around. Uh, so I'll start with the fluff. So in total, so I went out for the day, well, school day, and I got nine bits of fluff <coughs> and 10 bits of the £20 plus profit. I think I can confidently say that. But you let me know if you think I'm barking at the wrong... Ali. Right. Okay. So this, so there's some things that you'll pick up because you're like, I can't leave that. I can't leave that. And that's where the fluff comes in. And like, well, you can have it then, flower, but that's not what you're listing first. You need to get your stuff on. And if you want to fluff around with stuff because, oh, look how pretty it is, that's after. So this is the after. So it's a Marameco for Uniqlo. Um, it cost £8.50. Marameco is a oh, 1M 2Ks. That's the uh, Marameco for Uniqlo. I've never found real Marameco. Nice size though. What size is this? Oh, it's an XL. Jesus, look at that print. It's very like. Uh... Oh no, I have found. I had Marameco cups actually. It's very like all Achilles, isn't it? I know it's all Kylie, but I still say Achilles. Yeah, so but eight fifty. I mean, I've got I've got another Marimaco for Uniqlo on for fifteen at the moment. So fluff, you know. Why am I going to stick my fluff? Is that clean enough down there? I hoovered that way. Let me put something down because I don't know what's been on that rug. Let's put a blanket down. I don't want fluff on my fluff. Right. And um, yeah, and and also there's a bit of oh, I hear people in the US talking about that brand, and I don't want to pick it up because I oh, don't see that very often. Yeah, Shelley, that's not the first stuff you're listing. So this is a Madewell size small, cost six pounds. Uh, lovely cotton shirt, to be honest. Very nice. Yeah, it's not small, did I say? Yeah, so nice oversize as well. But this will be in the 
<laughs> listing for 15 to 20. So I'm going to be getting, what did I say? We're going to be looking at ten pound profit or less on the on this on this part of the flood. So yeah, made well. Again, I've heard people talking about Morella, which is a Max Mara diffusion brand. So yeah, paid seven pounds. Like oh, Morella. Didn't even know whether it would be fluff or not. Didn't have any idea. Gorgeous print. It's uh, what are those nut things? Oh, acorns. Are those acorns. Can you see them? Where are they? Are those acorns? I think they are. Uh, yeah, lovely, beautiful top in a size, who knows? They've got it as a 10. Size is probably somewhere else, but it cost £7. And this is going to be in the yeah list for 15 to 20. And, you know, real low-value fluff. Cos, which I'm meant to be weaning myself off of can't freaking help it so this is a a medium cos paid nine pounds fifty which is too much for cos if you uh are following my thing so yeah um doubtful if i'll get a ten back profit so it might be at well seven to ten pounds maybe Another cause I know, but I did, honestly, I lost. I lost. I left other cause that was more expensive, and I left a lot of and other stories that was in tiny sizes. Eight pounds I paid for this one, a medium again, and same story. You know, <clears throat> ten pound profit if I'm lucky. Ah, now this one. So this, I think we're on to the medium fluff here. This is the medium fluff where it, I'm not going to make twenty pound profit. I don't think. But I'm going to make more than 10, it's 10 to 20 pound profit on these. And there's five of these. Um, I'm just, oh, I think my tea's gone cold. Um, ba -la -la -la. Hello, Kathy. Lovely to catch you. Uh, lovely to see you. Uh, all right, so this, um, the Insta ladies were absolutely fantastic. I quickly, I chucked it on my Insta stories rather than looking it up because I didn't, I couldn't work out what the brand was called. This might sound really stupid, but there's some brands like that I've never found, like Rundles, that just have weird labels. And so I didn't know whether that that current Elliot was the label, was the brand. Uh, so I put it on, so I paid a tenner, put it on my stories and just uh, on post and just said, help, does anybody know? And a couple of people came back really quickly. So that was great and said, trial, you know, US brand, trials of sell. 25 to 45 and I thought oh I'll grab it it's um because it's a nice car key kind of army style play suit and let me see shorts for the summer that's got to be a good well also actually Connie hasn't seen this yet she, oh, she might want this so it's a size two that probably is a um, it's an eight or ten um yeah paid a tenner and I would probably put it on for 25 but might just get 20 so yeah i don't know it might get 25 so now you might think this is toast but it's going under the medium fluff pile because i paid 16 pounds and it's only i think it's about an 8 to 10 and it's it's just a lovely tunic top it does have pockets so that's in its favor and it's toast but i would think that i'm looking at 25 to 30. yeah so yeah it's under the 20 pound profit because of what i've paid uh right this is another brand that i haven't i haven't had before though i've seen the tack and i think <clears throat> with my eyesight couldn't work out what it was and they talk about it in america a lot I paid £11, it's free people, and it's that little golden tag thing uh, with the long bollocks hanging off down there, look. And it's it's clearly sold at, let me look at the inner label, at, do I think it's Urban Outfitters? Did I see something like that? Yes, for EU. Oh, imported by Urban Outfitters. So I don't really go to Urban Outfitters, but 
are they just like a department store for clothes? I don't really know. I'll have to ask Connie. Anyway, so this is Free People for Urban Outfitters and it's uh, Cardi. Nice. Uh, is that a dormant sleeve? Bit of a wrap thing going on there. So paid £11 and I guess it's like a brand that's sold more in the US. So although if it's Urban Outfitters, then people will know of it at least. So what am I putting that on for? Probably £25. Yeah, so it's below my £20. So that's why it's in the, it's in the medium fluff pile. Two more medium fluffs. And then we're on to the £20 plus profits. So it's an Anoki for East. Oh, fluff up. Um, size 14, which is probably about a 10 to 12 now. Nice Indian cotton block print, £7. And if it was a longer dress, I wouldn't have any bother at all getting £20 plus out of it. But because it's quite a small tunic type, you know, more of a top. That's why it's in the medium fluff. So I'll put that on, I think, for try 30. Yeah, if I got 30, I'd get the 20 pounds, but I, I would say that I'm looking more like 25-ish. So yeah, that won't be that. All right, last bit of medium fluff. Is Urban Outfitters like Banana Republic and American Eagle, etc. I don't know. I just make things up in my head. I just I thought American Eagle was just a thing on its own, its own brand. But but then Urban Out do Urban Outfitters have their are they their own brand? I don't know. Uh, see that BDG stuff. I need to ask Connor. Come here for all the information, everybody. So this is interesting. Ten pounds. It's Vince, which is a lovely brand, and it's silk, and it's clearly been in a an online shop thing where they call a rebel where they take your i guess it's like thrift plus where they take your stuff and you know, consignment type thing um so yeah it's a silk top uh ped tenor and although it's one of those things that the resale value doesn't seem to reflect its original value very well so i'm going to list yeah i can try 30 but i'm not expecting to get that at all so medium fluff, I, you know, I'd probably be happy to double my money. And I am generally happy to double my money, to be honest. So, yeah. Right, we are on to, right, I've got 10 items, which I think are going to be £20 plus profit. Some of them are surefire. Some of them, I think I'm just about done it anyway. But I've got enough fluff that I can list afterwards. So, can huge linen trousers and the tie belt what's going on is that tie all the way then yeah it must do so these are Eskandar again like these sold in Harrods and everywhere for these would be these trousers these what is that beige ecru is it yeah it would be like 250 300 pounds new and it's a size two i mean what the fuck is that i tried googling it and all i could get as far as was a large paid 10 pounds and uh oh it's so i got pockets that side there yeah. oh, that's pocket that's good and so i'm gonna price it like oscar i think and price it aim for 60 take 50 not reflective at all of its original price but given i paid a tenner then that would be a nice healthy um in my 20 pound plus nice and healthy this one is a little bit more just about got my 20 i think this is a speaker and i paid there we go, a small, and I paid £6.50. Gorgeous skirt, this is gorgeous. I uh, really love that. And it's, you know, um, well, it's a maxi on me, so which means it's a midi. Um, yeah, I'm sure this will be well, If as long as people know a speaker, I don't know where it's sold, then we'll be okay at 6 50 So I'll stick it on at 
30. So just about might get my 20 um, if I don't have any fees. Now, Sahara, I know that some people can get good money for Sahara. I don't seem to be one of those people right now. Paid seven pounds, needs a wash, as you can see by the Grim label, but that's new label Sahara. Good size, medium to large. Nice, you know, got pockets, drapey. Freaking filthy. The dirty mare that was wearing this, look at that. So that's got to go in the wash. But I'm, yeah, pretty sure I should be able to get 30 back on that. Let's go in the wash. And Oscar. Paid £20 for this. And in the shop where I bought this from, I'm surprised it wasn't more. Maybe it's because it's purple. I don't know. Yeah, so huge balloon dress with pockets. Yes. I'm getting much better at like going down, making sure all the buttons are there, checking the freaking pits, like holding up to the light for holes because I've just was bringing so much stuff back that had condition issues. So 20 and I'm thinking, what was I thinking on this? Yeah, list for, try and sell at 60. Yeah, again, I'm easily gonna get, yeah, easily get 30 pound profit back, so that's good. So you can see how most of the stuff's gonna get me towards the grand a month, even though if it was only 10 things at 200 pound profit a week, that would be about 800, depending on how many weeks, but you can see what I'm saying here. Um, see you later, George, off to the unit to pick up orders, latest potatoes. Right, Anoki, very nice. Did pay £30 for this because it's new with tags. Um, and I'm just looking, it's an Anoki block print kaftan, uh, free size. And I'm just looking to double my money on that. And um, I'll be fine with that. Like, the, you know, time of year we're in, I that should not be a problem doubling my money on that. So again, 30 that'll be 30 profit in the pot. Right, we have another, I wonder if it was the same donor, Escan, oh, I could check if I could be asked, but I can't. Um, another Escandar, this is a size one, whatever that is, size one, which, you know, you'd think is some little size, okay, but look at the size of it. I know it's probably oversized, which is great, Log and look, like a chambray dress, pockets, I mean, it's all the goodness, really. This would have been, God, I bet this would have been 350, 400 quid or something. Uh, morning, Queenie. Just going through my £20 plus profits. Um, so what am I going to list this one up? The Eskandar. Oh, did I tell you? So the Eskandar trousers we think are large, I, I'm going to try and sell at 80. There aren't many solds on eBay or Vestiaire. So I don't know, is it that people that buy Eskandar don't look for it second hand? I don't know. So I'll try for 80 on the trousers that you've seen. And then this dress. Hmm, I thought that I was going to try for 60, but to be honest, I'm going to try for 80 on the trousers. I don't know. I'm a bit, I'm kind of more keen on trying to price at the price I'm after at the moment rather than having to leave it on there, hanging around and drop it. If anybody knows about Eskandar and how to price, then do let me know. And also their stupid buggery sizer. Okay, we've got another Sahara new label. So this is, oh, and that's a size five. So that's that's a decent size. So there we go. Really, I presume that's also oversized. This is very 80s, this kind of textured. But yeah, lovely, lovely top that. And I paid eight pounds. And so I think 20 pound profit is safe there 
I probably want one that I price this up. See, I know some people would get 40 for that, but I'd probably be able to get 30. Uh, right. This was a tip from... You said it was a good bread and butter for her at the moment. Lulabel on Insta. Um, it's box two, and I did pay £8.50 because it's new with tags. Oh, there we go. Don't know where this is sold or if it's their own thing. Nice big oversized dress and a kind of orangey blue leopard. Do we have pockets? Don't think so, but anyway, it's new. So I'm pretty confident I can get 30 back on that. So I'm gonna oh no, I'm gonna put it on for I'm gonna aim for 40 actually. So yeah, so easily get my 20 pound plus from that one. Um two more to go. This one, I was drawn over by how different it looked. And then I thought, oh, hang on. Has this been, has someone customised this? It's really raw edged hem and it's not even a thing on it. But then I was looking at the, the zip. I'm like, no, this can't have been, yeah, this can't have been custom uh, cut because the zip is where it should end. Does that make sense? So I'm like, no, I think it's okay. But the shop I got it from would have priced this Megaly up if they'd have realised it's a nice brand. I paid £10 and it is Marise Francois Gabot. Okay. And there we go. Probably not tons of people looking for it. That's the only trouble. But amazing. Uh, just amazing skirt like what the flat there we go um just so different and what we're gonna aim to get back on this uh i'm gonna try for 50 so you know, it's summer let's see so that would be and now here's the highest profit one and literally I just you know when you have your heart starts going a little bit I had that with I found a uh, not needle and thread it's yeah needle and thread dress yesterday but somebody had clearly tried to wash it there were stains on it and it had shrunk slightly I'm like bugger because that's a really high needle and thread is a high brand but this I had a cardi in this and I sold I think I paid about 15 for it and sold it for 75 without without fees um i like this brand and this is the sort of shit i really want to be picking up these gorgeous dresses in these nice brands i did pay 20 pounds more than happy to it's wise london so two i'm guessing that's a 10 absolutely stunning stunning dress like midi medaxi <laughs> probably midi for most normal sized people got its belt it's so it feels so new it feels like somebody's worn it once i mean it doesn't feel like it's been worn but i'm guessing they've worn it but lovely hubbly and i think by my research so it's a leopard print and i think it's called nadine um so they yeah they've got their named um different dress styles on their website and I am going to list that for a hundred pounds. So, so I can see, and I did leave lots more fluff than I picked up <clears throat> than I showed you. So I was trying to remember the twenty pound plus profit, but I know there's going to be stuff that I'm going to go. I just have to pick it up, but it's the bigger stuff that I've got to get listed first because that's going to be my my income <clears throat> so well chuffed with when i saw that wise well chuffed uh rust love a bit of box two see it occasionally around here i've seen it before as well and i didn't bother with it i think i looked up comps and i wasn't blown away or am i getting mixed up with two downs anyway because luda bell was like it's good bread and butter i thought mm. and because it, it was new i thought oh okay <coughs> excuse me um, love it box too. See it occasionally around here, but we're too deep in the sticks to get most of 
the other brands you pick up. That said, our travel shop prices are way, way cheaper, so can't complain. Yeah, that's the thing that really um, can balance out, isn't it? Because you might be able to make a 20 from something because you're getting it a lot cheaper. Um, and these aren't from my local chassis either. I do travel to these ones. Um, but yeah, as long as you can make work where you can get to, then it's all right. <clears throat> Quinny I listing them on eBay or sticking to a site that we will not mention. Um, yes, the latter, Queenie. <laughs> uh, mostly. Mostly. I mean, some will, a couple will go on Vestiaire as well. Oh, I kept the odd sale on Vestiaire, but tricky as well because they're, it's tricky on Vestiaire as well because they're obviously always at you to reduce your prices. And so it's easy to see how stuff gets, I feel like, undersold on that sometimes if you're not strong. And, of course, you've got the massive fee on Vestiaire, which is only going to work if you're going to give you, if you're going to get a higher price than you would if you put it elsewhere. Um, yeah, so that's it. That took longer than I thought, actually. Is that 46 minutes? Um, yeah, so how about that? A reselling content video. Um, yeah, I'm actually well pleased with that source and it was kind of a, right, this is my new strategy. Let's go out and try it out. And I do feel I was in the first shop, I thought, oh, I did, sometimes you can go in and find nothing. And I did get a good clump in that, you know, like, I think I got about four 20, 20 pound profit plus bits in the first shop. So I was well chuffed. Um, yeah, so right, let's wrap it up. I've got shed loads to do and I've got an energy spurt, so we're off. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, as usual, for all your lovely comments on the last video. And bye-bye, um, don't bye. -bye, then. bye.